So I have a ton of material, and if we don't make it to all of it, um, I will ask Nikki if there's a, if they're going to be sending out presentations afterwards. So a um, little bit about me. Um, I am not a veterinarian, um, but I have an interest in rabbit medicine, and I love to help the rabbits um, to get better and to learn everything that I can to help them out with that. And I work really closely with our medical team um, to help the bunnies. Um, we have had a lot of special needs rabbits and injured rabbits come through House Rabbit Society, and I've done a lot of special care. Um, I started a rabbit spay neuter clinic um, with House Rabbit Society that we ran for several years. Um, I've presented original um, health research uh, about rabbits with Dr. Carolyn Harvey at an exotics veterinary conference um, and helped to uh, build out our medical program here at House Rabbit Society, building our surgical suite and bringing on um, Dr. Kim and Grace so that we can do more of the medical care and the surgeries in house. So again, I'm not a vet, but I work really closely with the medical team. So an important thing to know about rabbits and, and their health issues is that they're a prey species. Um, so they hide their symptoms when they're sick or when they're not feeling well, because they wouldn't want to alert a predator um, that, that they could be easily picked off. So in our homes, it makes it harder because we're looking for very subtle signs at times to know that they're not feeling well. Um, by the time that we might notice that they're not feeling well and it's really, really obvious, at that point, they can be very sick. So. Um, so, so we have to be a little bit like detectives when we are um, monitoring our rabbit's health. So just a quick overview about um, when to take your rabbit to the vet. Um, first, it's important to find a rabbit savvy vet. Many people know that not all veterinarians know about rabbits or can see them. Um, so if you're just planning to take your rabbit down the street to the vet that's down the street, if they ever got sick, um, odds are, that vet may not be able to help you. Um, so it's good to find a rabbit savvy vet in advance. Um, talk about how often to see a vet, talk about rabbit hemorrhagic disease vaccines, um, talk about some common rabbit health problems, especially that we see here at House Rabbit Society. Um, then I'll talk about some home supplies that you wanna have on hand for rabbit emergencies, and then becoming a member of House Rabbit Society so um, you can keep learning. So. Um, we have a list of rabbit savvy vets on our website. If you go to rabbitcenter.org, that top menu bar where it says rabbit veterinarians, we have a list that's broken down by regions. Um, so we have some rabbits up in Sonoma County, or some rabbit vets listed um, that are up in Sonoma County, um, but we have uh, rabbit vets all over the Bay Area. Um, and I know a couple of the, the other rescues in the area also have great um, vet lists on their websites as well. So you can always check their, their websites like um, Rabbit Haven and Save the Bunny, they also will have that list for who they recommend. Um, if you're not in the San Francisco Bay Area, and that's the beauty of the virtual bun fest, um, you can go to rabbit.org and um, click on that list. So under vets on the menu bar, click on that list, and we have recommendations across the country um, for rabbit savvy veterinarians. Um, these veterinarians are ones that have been recommended by people that, that know rabbits. Um, it may not be every vet who sees rabbits that are on these lists, um, but the ones on the list are, are vets that people have recommended. Um, so when to take your rabbit to the vet. So when you first adopt a rabbit, that's a great time to take them to the vet, establish the relationship with your vet, um, and make sure that they're healthy and they don't have any concerns, any problems. Um, when you have a new animal that's at home. Um, it's also important, you know, a lot of people are like, well, they're healthy, do I really need to take them to the vet? Um, it's great to build that relationship with someone. Um, in my experience, you know, if a vet's never seen you before and they're super busy and, you know, you call and you've got a, an emergency, you've got a problem and they're like, well, I'm all booked up for today. Um, if they know you, um, they might be more likely to reach out if there's a cancellation or if they're able to fit you in, um, if you already have that relationship there and they know you and they know your rabbit. Um, so, so it's always a good idea to build that relationship before there's an emergency, but also to get a baseline um, and, and know about your animal. Um, we recommend taking a rabbit for an exam every year. Um, so that's an annual wellness exam. Um, you wanna, again, look for that baseline health. 
find out if they're gaining or losing weight. Um, your vet may notice a health concern that, that isn't immediately obvious when they're running around the house. Um, they may palpate and find internal masses or find external masses that maybe were hidden on their underside. Um, they could hear a heart murmur or an arrhythmia and have you visit a cardiologist to see if they need heart meds. Um, we've had that happen several times here at House Rabbit Society. We take in a rabbit um, and Dr. Kim is doing their intake exam and then she hears a heart murmur and we're able to give them more time because we're able to have their heart fully evaluated and, and start medication. Um, molar problems. Um, rabbit's teeth never stop growing. And so they have to eat a lot of hay to wear down those molars. And um, rabbits, as they get older, can develop molar problems. And it's really important to catch those molar problems before the rabbit stops eating and it's an emergency. So I've got a picture there of a vet looking into the rabbit's mouth with an otoscope while they're awake. Um, and, and this is important to do with the annual exams. Um, they still can't get a perfect view, and I'll talk about that later, but, but it's helpful. At your annual exam, you may choose to do blood work. Um, it's helpful as a reference for when your animal is sick, and it can also alert to, um, to health problems before they're an emergency. So elevated globulins or white blood cell count could indicate infection or inflammation. So that would be helpful information to have. Um, it, see if your rabbit might be having a problem that you hadn't previously identified. You wanna be able to treat conditions early when they're minor. Um, sometimes we have rabbits that come in with a weepy eye and a tear duct flesh, nasolacrimal duct flesh um, or eye drops can fully resolve the problem. And so it's better to, to treat that when it's an early sign rather than after there's been a lot of scarring um, and, and the tear duct doesn't work anymore and then it'll never, you know, it'll always be VP after that. Um, and for seeing rabbits uh, that are over seven years, we would recommend um, doing an exam every six months. Rabbits often develop arthritis as they get older and there may be medications or supplements your vet recommends. They can check their eyes for any age-related eye changes that would make your rabbit's eyes uncomfortable, cataracts or glaucoma, and, and medications for that. All right, and now um, I'm sure everybody heard Dr. Pillany's talk earlier this morning. Um, rabbit hemorrhagic disease virus vaccines are an important part of your annual exam. The vaccine, the, it does last for a year, um, but it's very important that you get the vaccine on time every year. Um, you don't want it to go longer than a year. You can have it be slightly less than a year, but you don't want it to be more than a year. Um, so it's really important to do that at your, at your annual exam. Um, for those of you who haven't learned about rabbit hemorrhagic disease virus yet and would like to, um, we have a ton of information on our website if you go to rabbit.org slash RHD. And just a little bit about the virus. And again, I think most of you guys probably heard Dr. Pony's talk. It's a Khaleesi virus that only affects rabbits. It's very contagious, has a high mortality up to 100%. Um, it kills very quickly. Um, it can be simply sudden death is the only symptom. There may be either internal or external um, hemorrhaging, so bleeding, um, but there, there may not be. Um, you can live in the environment outside of an animal for a very long time. Basically at room temperature, it could live on cloth or grass uh, for, for three and a half months. So it lives outside of a host for a very long time, it can still be contagious and infectious. Um, it can be spread directly by rabbits, their urine or their feces, or it could be spread indirectly by people, by animals, on their paws, on their coats, um, in their feces, by birds flying overhead um, and dropping feces, and by insects as well. Um, so previously to 2020, RHDV um, was not in the wild rabbit population in the United States. And starting in 2020, um, the, the virus did spread to wild rabbits as well. So it can be spread uh, by wildlife, by wild rabbits, and then jump to domestic rabbits. It can be spread by domestic rabbits and jump to wild rabbits. Um, so we don't expect that RHDV is gonna go away. Um, there's also no cure. 
um, there's only the vaccine, um, which right now has to be imported from Europe and uh, biosecurity to prevent the, the virus from spreading to rabbits. So where is it? Um, this is the, the map. Um, so it looks like the USDA updated it last on March 4th. Um, and we know that, that it's not including the cases in Oregon from the last two weeks and the cases in Idaho. Um, so this is a little bit dated, but this is the most uh, up-to-date as of this morning um, that the USDA has on their website. Um, and so the closest to us in the San Francisco Bay Area is um, Kern County, the Bakersfield area. Um, there was a case in domestic rabbits in Nevada, um, but in Southern California, there have been a lot of cases in March and April, and it's jumping back and forth between wildlife and domestic rabbits. Um, and so, again, that's the, the most active area closest to us right now. Um, and we, it is moving northward. We do expect it to, to reach the Bay Area. Um, we just don't know exactly when. So talking a little bit more about your standard run-of-the-mill rabbit health uh, concerns. Um, the primary health issue that um, that that C and um, that nationwide, so nationwide is the only pet insurance that's available for rabbits in the United States. Um, they have a couple different plans now um, with different, different price points. Um, but I, I talked with them a few years back and got this list of the, the top health conditions that people submit insurance claims for for their rabbits. And the top one is GI stasis, where the rabbit stops eating and pooping. And the second one is overgrown teeth. So I'll talk a little bit about those and I'll touch on some of the other um, items below that, but talk a little bit more about GI stasis. Um, some of the things they didn't include have to do with what they don't cover. Um, so they don't cover parasites. Uh, so mites and fleas are very common, but they're not on this list. Neurological problems are fairly common, but um, also not on this list. Uterine cancer is the top cancer in rabbits. And if a rabbit is not spayed, about 80% of them will develop uterine cancer of the females um, between age three and age six. And again, um, with rabbits like lily puff, we've seen that directly um, where they develop cancer um, if they're not spayed. Um, and then neoplasia of all different kinds. So there are a number of different kinds of cancer that rabbits can get. And those things weren't included in this list of um, health insurance claims. So we've got a great article on GI stasis on our website at rabbit.org. And a GI stasis is often referred to as the silent killer. So the article starts with, it's an all too familiar story my bunny stopped eating and then she just died. So with GI stasis, when rabbits stop eating, they can die within 12 to 24 hours um, if you don't take action right away. So the question is always why? Why did the rabbit stop eating? Um, and that why question is almost impossible to answer. We almost never know exactly why. Um, but we can say generally, um, pain anywhere in the body can cause GI stasis. Um, it could be a super minor pain, or it could be big pain, um, gas pain, uh, could be pain from arthritis um, due to changes in the weather and barometric pressure. Um, it could be something like a stubbed toe. You don't even know that they stubbed their toe and, and then they're in pain and then they stop eating. Um, or it could be something like molar points. Um, their teeth are getting overgrown and those molar points are cutting into their cheek or their tongue and that pain could cause them to stop eating. Um, if a rabbit gets dehydrated, that can cause GI stasis or stress. Um, I have a friend that every time she would start to pack a suitcase for a trip, her rabbit would see the suitcase and get stressed and go into GI stasis right before a trip. So um, I've, I've known a lot of rabbits with kind of idiosyncratic, idiosyncratic patterns about stress and, um, and stasis. Um, some rabbits are very stressed by a car ride, um, so stress could sometimes cause that. Um, and so again, that the why question, what caused my rabbit stasis episode? And I would say about 95% of the time, we don't have an exact answer. There's no obvious cause of what caused the GI stasis. And the biggest thing you can do to prevent it 
is a really healthy diet, a hay-based diet. So we've got a bunch of HRS volunteers down in San Diego with a giant pile of hay um, that they're getting ready um, to distribute um, to the bunnies. So diastasis, what happens when rabbits stop eating? Their digestive system shuts down, they stop pooping. So the stopping eating and stopping pooping usually go hand in hand. Um, when their GI system slows down, they can have an overgrowth of the bad bacteria Clostridium, which produces gas and mucus and toxins, so it makes them even sicker. Um, they become lethargic and limp. Their temperature starts to drop. Their organs become stressed and start to shut down, and then they die. So, and that often happens in less than 24 hours unless you take urgent action. So how to know when your rabbit's in GI stasis? Um, what we like to do is offer them a treat, offer them something that is their favorite that you know they always want. And if they don't want that, then you know that there's a problem. So um, this bunny is getting a little piece of banana. Oftentimes banana is a big hit with rabbits. Um, it could be a little piece of dried fruit. It could be a little slice of carrot. It could be a little bunny cookie, um, whatever it is, it, you want it to be something that's familiar to your rabbit and something that you know that they really like. Um, so that you can use that treat as a test um, when, to see if they're not feeling well. Um, oftentimes rabbits are really excited about pellets too. So you can use the pellets as a test. Even if it's not your normal time to feed your rabbit, um, you might pour some pellets into their bowl to see if they run over like they always do. Um, if your rabbit isn't a big pellet eater and they just leave the pellets in the bowl, then that's not gonna be a good test for your rabbit. So you can feel your rabbit's abdomen. Um, you can feel their stomach, um, which is high up under their ribs. Um, the, the stomach is super high up. Um, you wanna feel if their stomach feels soft and doughy, or um, if you're massaging their abdomen and your rabbit seems painful, they're flinching, um, they're, they're crunching their teeth in a painful way. Um, those would be signs that there is a problem and you wanna go to the vet right away. Um, if you feel their stomach and it feels distended like a beach ball, um, it feels like it's full of gas, that's a good reason to go to the vet right away. Um, so rabbits ordinarily, if you're palpating their abdomen, usually they actually really like it. Um, a lot of rabbits, when they're having their intake health exams, Dr. Kim is feeling their abdomen and they're purring their teeth and they're comfortable and they're relaxed and they're happy. So if you are feeling your rabbit's abdomen and um, they're uncomfortable, they're flinching, those are signs that they're painful and um, they need to see the vet. So another great way to tell if your rabbit's in stasis is to take their temperature and it is a rectal temperature with rabbits. Um, so Dr. Harvey here is um, taking this rabbit's temperature by supporting his back on a tabletop with a blanket. Um, some people will sit the bunny in their lap to do this. Um, and the thermometer is at an angle to the bunny. Um, this is my favorite thermometer for taking rabbits' temperatures, the VIX Comfort Flex. You can find it most places, um, online, Amazon, um, most drugstores carry it. Um, I like it because the number readout is nice and big. Uh, it's got a flexible tip. Um, it reads really quickly. You don't want a really slow thermometer and you're sitting there holding your rabbit for a long time and they're starting to struggle. Um, so, so this one is really fast and I like it. Uh, the only thing that's annoying about it is it does require a coin battery that's not readily available in stores. So you have to buy those over the internet, which is pain. We've got a great video on rabbit.org on how to take rabbit's temperature. So you can practice this at home. Um, and a rabbit's normal temperature, I usually say 101 to 103, um, but rabbits can often be stressed and it can go up to 104 and they're not actually having a medical problem. They're just a little bit stressed when you're taking their temperature. Um, but normally 101 to 103 or 101 to 104, um, but rabbits, it gets dangerous really quickly if their temperature starts to drop. So basically anything under 101 is gonna be a concern. And if it's more than one degree outside of normal, so it's under 100, that is an emergency. You wanna warm your bunny up and you wanna get them in to see the vet. Uh, but definitely it's a great idea to practice. 
Um, watch this how-to video on rabbit.org and practice taking your rabbit's temperature when there's not an emergency. So again, if the rabbit's temperature is low, um, it's likely GI stasis or a related problem, and you would want to get them in to see the vet. And if it's high, it could be a sign of infection. Um, and again, if it's more than one degree outside of normal, you do want to go to the vet. Um, I usually recheck their temperature every 15 to 30 minutes to see how they're doing. You can also listen to your rabbit's gut sounds to see if they're in GI stasis. Um, you can buy stethoscopes super inexpensively, listen for gut sounds. Are they gentle and intermittent? That would be normal. Are they absent? Uh, that would be a, an indication of GI stasis. Are they very active? So sometimes a rabbit's not eating, but they have hyperactive gut sounds, um, and that could indicate an infection in the GI system or megacolon or another GI problem. Um, but, but super, super active gut sounds would also be a concern. You can listen to their lungs. Do their lungs sound wheezy or gurgly or crackly? Those would all be good reasons to go to that. Uh, so here's just one example on um, Amazon. You can find home stethoscopes for under 20 bucks. Um, and, and these are great. Um, I really like the kind with two tubes like this. Uh, I feel like I can hear just as well with these inexpensive stethoscopes as I can with my like $100 Littman professional stethoscope. So um, don't be afraid to order an inexpensive stethoscope. So there are a couple things that look like GI stasis that are not GI stasis. Megacolon is one of those. So um, for rabbits with megacolon, um, we've had success um, giving them lifelong motility drugs and starting treatment with those motility drugs before they're in stasis or having GI problems. Um, so megacolon rabbits tend to be spotted rabbits with very few spots. Um, so all three of these rabbits here were rabbits that had megacolon. Um, so they have very few spots and uh, there are a very small number, a very small percentage of white rabbits with pink eyes that could also carry this gene. Um, but we primarily see it with spotted rabbits. Their um, psychotropes may be like odd, kind of large tootsie roll shapes and wetter than the normal rabbit's poops. Um, they often will have some cecal leakage, which it looks on its hell almost like it's urine, but it's a little bit darker and more brown. Um, and uh, this is basically kind of juice from their intestinal contents. And, uh, and it often doesn't wash out as easily uh, from your blankets and towels as urine would. Um, this is the kind of characteristic thing that we see with these rabbits. Is so these are all um, produced at the same time. <laughs> um, so this is on one day from this from one rabbit. Um, very different sizes of poops. Um, so some very big poops that are like double sized and some very tiny little broken pieces of poops. Um, and you can see that all of these poops are also not perfectly round. So healthy rabbits, their poops are often very symmetrical. They're all very round, all about the same shape and size. Um, and with rabbits that have megacolon, this digestive disorder, their poops all the time are different shapes and sizes. So um, again, if you are watching this and you suspect your rabbit may have mango colon, um, it's definitely a good idea to go to the vet. All right, so another thing that looks like GI stasis, rabbit's not eating, um, but it's not GI stasis, is something called gastric bloat. And it happens when there's an obstruction in the intestinal system or um, basically between the stomach and the intestines. Um, so here's an x-ray of a rabbit that has gastric bloat, and this is their stomach. Um, and it's, again, like I mentioned before, their stomach is high up under their ribs. You can see there's a giant gas bubble, and there's, the stomach is very distended, and it's going below the rib cage. Um, and that, that giant stomach is putting pressure on their heart and their lungs, and it's very painful for them. Um, often you can feel it um, on palpation, the vet will feel the stomach and the abdomen and can feel that big hard stomach and it's generally confirmed with x-ray. Uh, when this happens, it's absolutely an emergency 
and uh, the rabbit needs a tube passed um, from their mouth into their stomach to be decompressed um, at absolutely as soon as possible. Um, if a rabbit has several decompressions but rebloats, they may need emergency intestinal surgery to try to remove the obstruction. Um, when a rabbit has a gastric bloat or an obstruction, it's very important not to syringe feed them. Um, this is a big painful stomach and we don't wanna add anything more to that. Um, it's important not to give motility drugs. Um, it could potentially cause a rupture and it's very important not to give meloxicam. Um, this is a rabbit whose organs are all very stressed and um, their kidneys get stressed very quickly when they're in um, gastric bloat and meloxicam can be very hard on the kidneys if a rabbit's not doing well already with their kidneys um, and meloxicam can make things worse. So um, another thing to know is that meloxicam, it would be like taking an, a Tylenol if you have a broken leg. The level of pain with this condition is so high that they need a stronger pain medication um, from the vet as soon as possible. So another cause of rabbits not eating so it looks like GI stasis, but it's not, is a condition called liver lobe torsion. Um, basically, a rabbit's not eating and they're lethargic. There's decreased pooping. Um, so it sounds very much like GI stasis. The bunny looks like they're in GI stasis. One interesting thing is that the temperature may actually be normal, um, which is unusual for GI stasis. So that's a, that's a flag. Um, or the temperature could be low, so it could be the same as G GI stasis. Their abdomen, their belly may be painful, maybe not. Um, the only way to really catch this is if you take your bunny to the vet and you do blood work when they're in stasis. Uh, if you do blood work, there's a liver enzyme called, um, well, it's abbreviated ALT, and that is going to be really high. Um, and it's, the vet would take one look at a blood work readout for a rabbit in stasis, if their ALT is high, they're probably going to want to confirm with abdominal ultrasound and then go straight to surgery. Um, unfortunately, oftentimes uh, people don't know that the rabbit have liver lobe torsion and the diagnostic, how we find out is uh, we find out on necropsy. If, if someone does a necropsy with a rabbit, um, we find cases of liver lobe torsion that we wouldn't have found otherwise. Um, so there's an article, uh, that, that I think is a super interesting, super helpful article about liver lobe torsion in rabbits. Um, this is from a few years ago. Um, and one of the interesting things that they found was, oh, it'll be on the next slide, but that WAPs are overrepresented, um, at least in that study in liver lobe torsion cases. And um, I've known a number of WAPs who have had liver lobe torsion. I've also known a number of rabbits who are not WAPs who've had it. Um, but it does seem like LAPS may be overrepresented. Um, so with liver lobe torsion, it's a condition that needs surgery as fast as possible, ideally within the first 24 hours of the onset of the problem. Um, and you need a surgeon that's done the surgery before. Um, it's not a surgery that every rabbit vet can do or feels comfortable doing. And um, so you need to find a surgeon um, who's done it before and had good outcomes. And, and so that can be really stressful, especially during COVID, um, when vets are booked so far out, um, when you have an emergency like this and you, you have to find somebody right away. Um, so interestingly from the study, we found that nine out of nine, which was 100% survived with the surgery um, and less than half survived just on supportive care. Um, this, so, so there were two takeaways from this for me. One is, um, if I was a rabbit and somebody was making that decision on my behalf, whether or not to do the surgery or to just hospitalize and do supportive care, I would want someone to choose to do the surgery because the odds are so much better with the surgery. Um, however, it's a very expensive surgery um, and, and it's possible that not everyone can afford it. Um, so there is a chance that a rabbit could live um, if they have supportive care. Um, so that, that I think was a surprising thing about this paper because I think the assumption was that rabbits would die without the surgery. Um, and most of them do, absolutely, um, but there is a small chance that they could survive um, without the surgery. So, um, but again, the, the study found 100% survived with the surgery. So if it's possible, 
it's definitely a surgery that you wanna to choose to go ahead with for your rabbit. Um, we did have our rabbit with liver lobe torsion here about two years ago at House Rabbit Society. And we were able to find a surgeon in time and um, the rabbit did great with the surgery. And um, you know, he went on to get adopted and have a loving home um, and you know, was able to just go on with his life. So, um, and, and I've known many rabbits at this point who have survived this surgery. So um, it's a stressful situation, but you will never know that it's happening unless you do blood work when a rabbit's in GI stasis. So again, here's the, the takeaway about the laps and these two particular laps um, were both adopted um, by a friend of mine and they are not, the, the two laps are not related, um, but both of them um, ended up having liver lobe torsion within nine months of each other. Um, so my friend ended up paying for two of these surgeries in less than a year um, and both of them survived and are still doing great several years later. So um, it's a good takeaway. All right, so how is GI stasis treated? So if you take your rabbit to the vet, um, they're gonna hydrate your rabbit, usually doing sub-Q fluids, um, and they're gonna warm them up if your rabbit's body temperature is low. They're gonna provide heat support, especially if your rabbit's you know, under 101. They're gonna do pain management. So depending on the level of pain, they might do Meloxicam or an opiate like tramadol or buprenorphine. Um, they might use uh, serenia, which is called marifatin. Um, they might use that for, for intestinal pain. They'll often use a motility medication like metoclopramide, also called Reglan or cisapride, and nutrition support with syringe feeding with critical care. So, so let's say your rabbit stops eating and it's midnight or Christmas or Sunday, and you can't get into the vet until Monday morning. So this is the hard thing. Um, all the things the vet would do at the vet practice, um, most of those things, the average person is not gonna have access to at home. Um, so for hydration, you may not have sub fluids that you can give your rabbit. Maybe you can uh, orally syringe some water or some coconut water, which has electrolytes. Um, you can take their temperature and if their temperature is low, you could do some heat support at home. Um, pain management, all of those medications are all by prescription. So unless you already have a pre-existing relationship with your vet, your rabbit's been in stasis before, they've talked you through what to do, um, none of those are things that, that you'll have access to at home. The motility medications are all also by prescription. Um, and so there's nutrition support, there's, there's syringe feeding critical care. So basically, um, you know, if you can't get into a vet, there are a couple things that you can do, but um, certainly your odds are better if you can get the rabbit in to start treatment. Uh, another thing that you can do at home is you can give um, your rabbit an enema. This sounds a little bit crazy, but we've actually incorporated it into our GI stasis, uh, official medical GI stasis protocol here at House Rabbit Society um, because we found enemas to be so effective in rabbits and stimulating their GI system and helping poops move through their system and helping kind of kickstart things. So um, there's a great video you can go on YouTube and search for how to give your pet body an enema. And this is an educator with House Rabbit Society who's doing a demonstration video. Um, and it, it's really made a difference for us. So there's other home remedies that people often use for GI stasis, um, like baby gas drops called smethicone. Um, it, it can't hurt. Uh, it's basically not chemically active, um, but it might not help either. Um, there was a great paper on semethicone, um, journal article from a couple of years ago, and it talks about that basically semethicone works by combining gas bubbles. Um, so it's a surfactant and it breaks down all the little bubbles into bigger bubbles that are hopefully easier for the body to pass. Um, except for in the case of rabbits, rabbits often don't have frothy gas. They often have big gas bubbles to start with. And so it may actually not make it any easier for the gas to pass out of the rabbit. At the same time, anecdotally, some people do feel like it helps their rabbit when they're in stasis um, or when their rabbit's gassy. And again, it's not gonna hurt. So um, baby gas drops, you can have it on hand at home. It's not gonna be a problem. 
Pineapple juice, on the other hand, you do not want to give if your rabbit is not eating, or really anytime. It is very high in sugar. Um, even though there are enzymes in pineapple juice, um, it actually has to be fresh pineapple, not bottled juice, not canned juice, not canned pineapple. Like it actually has to be like a cut pineapple to have those active enzymes in it. Um, but pineapple is super high in sugar, and all the bad bacteria love sugar and they eat sugar and they turn that sugar into toxins and mucus and gas. So you want to stay away from pineapple juice. Um, papaya, similar concern about the sugar. Um, you can do abdominal massage, but you have to be very gentle, um, especially if the rabbit is painful when you're massaging them. You don't want to make things worse. Um, you can also use a, like a massager, um, or you can put them in a litter box or in a carrier on top of the washing machine, which will shake and give them vibrations, which could help move gas through their system. I always keep a log if my rabbit is going into stasis. If there's anything that I do at home before I head into the vet, I make sure to jot that down. And so I keep a log of what time, I take their rectal temperature, I feel their stomach and their abdomen, I listen for gut sounds with the stethoscope. If I do any kind of intervention, I write it down as well as if I'm giving them medication or baby gas drops or anything, I write down how much I gave. Um, and I write down if they're currently eating, if they're currently pooping, um, and then any additional notes. Um, at the top, I've got what day it is, um, when we know for sure that they ate last, because that's gonna be a question that the vet's gonna ask. Um, and it's helpful to know today's weight. Um, so that can be helpful for calculating medications and that kind of thing. I, I really like to have a log of everything um, so that I can share that with the vet. Um, so the biggest thing for preventing GI stasis is having a healthy diet um, that's primarily hay. So you want hay to be the bulk of the diet. Um, rabbits should be eating about their size of their body in hay every day. Um, and then a salad of leafy greens, about one to two cups chopped for the average size rabbit. Um, pellets are really for the vitamins and minerals. Um, so just a small amount of pellets. Um, here we do an eighth of a cup twice a day for the average rabbit, um, or you can do a fourth of a cup once a day. And then treats should really be at a minimum. Um, you don't want to upset their DI system with treats. Hey, there's a bunch of different choices. So you can find what works best for your household in terms of the allergies and what works best for your rabbit in terms of what they like. Um, Timothy hay is a great choice for adult rabbits as well as orchard grass. Um, we sell probably 75% orchard grass here at House Rabbit Society because it's better for people that have either allergies or asthma. And it's nutritionally equivalent for the rabbit. Um, so if you haven't tried orchard grass yet, it's a great option. Um, a lot of people, their rabbits like oat hay or three-way hay, which is oat, wheat, and barley blended together. Um, you can use it as a treat hay. Um, you can use it as a primary hay as long as the rabbit is also eating the stems and not just the delicious little seed heads. Um, alfalfa is great for nursing moms, babies who are still growing, basically six months and under, um, and for senior rabbits that need to gain weight. Um, but it's high in calcium, so it can cause problems for adult rabbits. It can cause problems for senior rabbits too, so that's something you would want to talk about with your vet. Um, but it's really high in protein, which is helpful for, for growing rabbits. And that high calcium helps baby rabbits um, build healthy bones and healthy teeth. And what's the best kind of hay? It is the kind that your rabbit will eat. So you want your rabbit to be enthusiastic about hay. To be fair, this is actually a picture of a rabbit kind of building a nest, but he was a neutered male. I don't know why he was building a nest. Very sweet thing. All right. Um, so for pellets, again, we just recommend a small amount of pellets for the vitamins and minerals. You can use either Timothy or alfalfa pellets, even for adults, but for adults, alfalfa pellets can cause them to get chubby. So you have to be very careful about the quantity so they don't get overweight with an alfalfa pellet. Um, it's very important to avoid a mix, a pellet mix that has seeds and nuts and candy and fruit in it. Um, there have now been several journal articles talking about how bad these are for rabbits. Um, they cause obesity, they cause GI problems, uh, imbalance in the bacteria, they cause dental disease, they can cause obstruction. 
Um, so, th so there's a whole range of reasons um, why uh, a mix with pellets and seeds and nuts and candies. Um, rabbits also do what's called selective, selective feeding. So um, rabbits are natural concentrate selectors and in the wild, um, they're looking for the fattiest, richest foods um, because they don't know when they're gonna get something fatty and rich next. And so um, it would be like if you offer a person a Snickers bar and a salad um, and every meal they have the choice between a Snickers bar and a salad, um, the rabbit would always pick the Snickers bar if they have a choice. Uh, so <laughs> you don't wanna offer them a Snickers bar because they're always gonna eat the things that are bad for them. And then it's gonna cause all these associated health problems. And they're not gonna eat the pellets, which have the vitamins and the minerals and the nutrition in them. They're just gonna eat all the, the goodies and not get enough of the vitamins. Um, so, uh, yeah. Just need to give you a, a, a time warning. If you can wrap up. Okay, we got about 10 minutes. So I'm gonna just quickly skip ahead. I'm gonna show you guys a bunch of pictures but I'm not going to talk much about them. Um, so salads for bunnies. We've got some veggies, a veggie list on our website. Um, it's important to offer your rabbit a bowl rather than a bottle for water to drink out of. Rabbits drink more water and stay better hydrated. Um, if you see any of these problems that I'm about to show you, these are all great reasons to go to the vet. If your rabbit has a problem with their eyes, discharge, cataracts, bulging eyes, injuries to the eyes. If they're sneezing, have a nasal discharge. If they've got mouth problems, incisor problems, drooling, eating more slowly, changing their dietary preferences, or they have a big giant jaw swelling like this bunny. So vets will look in their mouth. Under anesthesia, they can get a better view. That's where we'll look at x-rays to evaluate teeth, use a CT scan to evaluate teeth. Um, again, on the teeth issue, don't feed your rabbit muesli pellets with the seeds and candies mixed in. This is Dexter. He was fed nothing but those pellets. They bought them at Target. Um, they had seeds and candies mixed in and he got horrible jaw abscesses and had horrible dental problems. Rabbits can get um, incisor malocclusion. It's congenital. They're born with it um, and their teeth will just never line up. So generally we do incisor extractions for these bunnies. Um, you can do a, an incisor trim, um, but their teeth are constantly growing. And so you have to do it all the time to keep them worn down. Um, so there was a bunny that had incisors removed with HRS. If you see weird stuff in your rabbit's ears, it's a good reason to go to the vet. And laps often have weird stuff in their ears because their ears fall down and create a perfect warm dark place for bacteria to grow. So here's three laps that all have different levels of wax and ear infections. Um, so that will look with the otoscope and they'll, you can sometimes smell if your rabbit has an ear infection. Um, if your rabbit has skin problems, that's a great reason to go to the vet. They might have dandruff, which can be caused by fermites uh, flea dirt, <laughs> butt fly larva, that's the thing on the top, um, wounds, abscesses, like the bunny on the bottom, came to house rabbit society with a half pound of abscess. Um, these are all great reasons to go see the vet. If your rabbit develops head tilt or a neurological problem, or maybe a musculoskeletal problem like a broken leg or a spinal injury, um, all of these reasons are good reasons to go to the vet. So what are some uh, things you wanna have in your first aid kit at home? Um, I've got kind of a long list, and we also have a list on rabbit.org. Um, you'll want to have a pet carrier um, so you can take your rabbit to the vet or also evacuate if there's a, a wildfire or another emergency. Um, like I mentioned before, a digital thermometer to take that rectal temperature. Um, and I use a, a water-based lubricant for that, so you can just buy something at the drugstore like KY Jelly. Um, you can use a stethoscope to listen to gut sounds a baby scale or a postal scale to check your rabbit's weight, a snuggle safe or a plug-in heat pad for um, temperature support, and a pediatric gold syringe for enemas. Um, I like to have gauze on hand in case there's a skin injury, um, water bottles in the freezer if a rabbit is overheating on a hot day, critical care or another recovery um, food brand, and a 35cc catheter tip feeding syringe, 
a small flashlight to take a better look in ears or at issues on the skin or to backlight nails for nail trim. Rubbing alcohol, you can use it to sterilize your thermometer. Um, you can apply it to the ears of an overheating rabbit to help them um, cool down. Hydrogen peroxide is great to have. You can um, check for blood by spraying hydrogen peroxide on blood. Um, it will bubble on blood, but it will not bubble on red urine that is, does not have blood in it. Um, Styptic powder or cornstarch in case you accidentally cut your rabbit's nails too short and they start bleeding. And a willow basket. Um, I have found that my rabbits, when they start eating after a GI stasis episode, the first thing they wanna eat is a willow basket. So always have those on hand. You can also talk with your vet about having GI stasis supplies on hand at home um, and talk with them about how to prepare for GI stasis when their office might be closed. Is there an emergency hospital that they recommend? Um, would they be willing to send you home with a couple of doses of medication and tell you when it would be appropriate to use them? And then just to wrap up, um, if you're interested in learning more, you can also always become a member of House Rabbit Society. If you go to our website, rabbit.org, um, any donation of $20 or more um, gets you a membership. And you get a subscription to the House Rabbit Journal, um, our color magazine on the right. Um, you, unfortunately, we did have a discount on boarding. I haven't updated the, the card there, but um, we unfortunately have closed our boarding um, due to COVID and our HDV. Um, but you still do get members only discounts on the back of your member card. Um, so we got different um, rabbit supply shops that are online that you can get some discounts with on the back of your card. And there's my contact information. If anybody um, wants to shoot me an email, you're welcome to do that. And I'm happy to take questions. Stop the share.